any historian of Christianity or church historian, a believer, let's say, who studies the history of Christianity, Protestant, Roman Catholic, or Orthodox, there's always going to be the challenge of how to be historically consistent, accurate, honest with the facts, and just to look at sort of a historicism, to focus just specifically on an event um, or development of institutions, combined with the notion and the belief that God has a hand in all of this, that, there's, that, that, that there is a Holy Spirit, and that there is something that Christians would call salvation history. And so how does a historian work out the challenges of looking at historical evidence and trying to understand the development, the evolution of ideas, of, ins- of institutions, the movements of people, etc., within Christianity. And then the other challenges coupled with that would be the question of how does that all fit in with God's plan for his church. So in some sense, all church historians, though that is believers um, who are historians and study Christianity, uh, have to grapple with that question, Protestant, Christian, Protestant, Roman Catholic or Orthodox. Now, what would be the distinction between perhaps the, these three approaches to history, either Roman Catholic, Orthodox, or Protestant? And I would say that, that it probably focuses more on ecclesiology. And if one wants to look at the ecclesiology, which is technical term for how one understands the church, what is the church, uh, and how the church sort of sees itself organized, not only just as an institution, but as a divine human institution, I would say there is probably where you would see the fundamental difference. For traditional Roman Catholic ecclesiology, which is not oftentimes that distinct from Orthodox ecclesiology, but for traditional Roman Catholic ecclesiology, one could use the famous phrase for ancient Roman culture, all roads lead to Rome. And so in some sense, when one is to interpret the history of Christianity from a Roman Catholic perspective, one cannot do so without understanding the role, the significance, the activity, and um, the impact of the the papacy, of the Bishop of Rome. And much of Roman Catholic history, church history, is caught up, focused on uh, the development of the papacy and its role with the larger church. From a Protestant perspective, that whole sort of focus on one bishop, one see, is thrown out the window. Because for their ecclesiology, all ecclesiology is local in some sense, and that is to say, for a, a Protestant ecclesiology, not that the uh, the local Protestant church down the street is somehow not in communion or part of the body of Christ with the other uh, Protestant church down the street, but they're so independent. They're independent organizational, organizationally, um, structurally, they may look different. And so for a, a, a historian coming out of um, the Protestant milieu mindset, focusing on the history of Christianity, one would look at the development of, of Christianity from a very localized perspective. What's happening on the ground at any given time in any given community? There is continuity with with Protestant historians when they look at the church, but it's not focused on one church per se, for 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 um, as it would be for the Roman Church. For for the Orthodox historian who studies um, the development and history of Christianity, uh, there's sort of I would argue maybe a, you might want to think about it in terms of uh, there's a combination of the two because oftentimes Orthodox ecclesiology and this would be defined in Orthodox ecclesiology in relationship to other, that is Roman Catholic or or Protestant. Um, and so there's a little danger in doing this, but one could think that from an Orthodox perspective, looking at the history of Christianity, the history of the church, um, it's a combination of the both, of both. That is to say that all church is local, all church is Eucharistic. Uh, the history of the church begins in some sense um, with um, with the coming together, the breaking of bread, the Eucharistic assembly. Uh, and so whether there's a Eucharistic celebration in Buke, Montana, or here in Boston, Massachusetts, there is the fullness of the church, uh, regardless of where you are. St. John Chrysostom has a wonderful prayer before communion that's rarely read. Um, it's not in the preparation for uh, for uh, communion in the books that we have, the popular books, but 
he basically says that um, as you approach, don't approach any differently simply because the emperor is in presence at the at the liturgy or because it's a major feast day. You should always approach with the same humility um, that is approach the Eucharist with the same humility, the same awe, because the celebration, whether it's on a lowly Saturday morning in some small village or whether it's in the Church of Hagia Sophia on Christmas Sunday with the presence of the Emperor and the Patriarch, it's the same Eucharist. And in that, and in that sense, um, for Orthodox, all ecclesiology is local. However, it's not cut off from an institutional organization. Um, because for us Orthodox, not only is the breaking of bread in the Book of Acts fundamental, but it's also what took place at the beginning of the Book of Acts, and that is that the apostles came together, and as they came together, it was when they were together that the Spirit was given. So the celebration of Pentecost, the giving of the Spirit, Christ's fulfillment of his promise to his disciples, that I will send you the comfort of the Spirit of truth, it's significant that it happened in a group setting, not in an individual setting. It wasn't Peter you know, up in Antioch or Paul in Rome, and then all of a sudden the Spirit comes, although one could argue that does what happened with Paul, but at least initially the, the giving of the Spirit was a communal. It was, um, if you will, uh, a, a conciliar gift. And in that sense, for us Orthodox, that's foundational. We can't think of the history of Christianity without thinking of community and unity. There is individuality. There, as, as I mentioned, there is the local Eucharist, which is in the fullness um, of its essence, is the church, but it's greater than that. Uh, the other thing I would, I would say that really distinguishes us Orthodox between um, Protestants, not so much Roman Catholics, but Protestants, Protestant view of the development of, of the church or of church history, would be, for us, the sense of continuity sense of continuity from the early church down to the present. One thing I one thing that I tell my students here at Holy Cross is that the problem we Orthodox face sometimes is we make the argument, well, we're the church of the early Christians. We're the first church. And so what does that mean? Sometimes we prioritize and lift up what happens in those first early few centuries, which is really important. And we can see continuity and development in that, which is historically accurate, ecclesiologically, theologically sound, etc. The problem, the problem is, is that sometimes we as Orthodox take one particular moment in history of the development of the early church and say, oh, there it is, that's what a church was back in the second century, that's what we should be in the 21st century. That's really not Orthodox, an Orthodox understanding of the development of Christ's mission in the world, the evangelical mission to convert all to the gospel. It's not part of, of, I think, the gift of the Spirit that was given at Pentecost. Having said that, though, what separates us from, I would say, Protestant historians of Christianity would be that for Protestant historians of Christianity, they will focus on that early church and say, we've got to go back to the early church. And in fact, that's what Luther's argument was, and many of the reformers' arguments were, was is that we've got to go back to that pristine Christianity. We as Orthodox sometimes say that as well, but I think we say it a bit differently. For the reformers and for Protestants today, that means throwing out the development of Christianity from the 4th, 5th, 6th, 7th, 8th centuries, for us Orthodox, we don't do that. We don't throw it out. Um, we have to be sort of this continuity, the, the power of the Spirit alive in the life of the Church as the Church expresses itself, lives its life in a particular context, historical, linguistic, cultural, political. And there's this, there's this expression of what Church is, but there's a continuity from the past down to the present. Not that our Protestant theologians would say otherwise, but they tend to focus more on first four centuries of Christianity. Some might even focus even the first two centuries of Christianity, say if we can get back to that, that's where we should be. For us Orthodox, it's more of a continuity. I would say Roman Catholic theologians um, or historians of Christianity would be more like Orthodox in that sense.